So there's the motor in place. The shaft I'm using is actually a piece of fibreglass. It comes from a cheap kite. So I just pull it out again. So I've connected it to the shaft of the motor. Uh, a bit of tubing off of uh, some cable. It's just the insulation off the outside of some power cable. And that's a nice tight fit on there, so that's holding it all together. So we'll hot glue that in place. And make a propeller to go on the end here. We use this piece of drinks can to make the propeller. I don't know if you can see the shape I've just drawn on there. I'll just colour it in, you might go to see it a bit easier then. blades. And a bit of luck, I can cut it out with scissors because it's very thin stuff. That's our three-bladed propeller. I need to make the hole in the middle a little bit bigger so that we can put it over there and then hold it in place with hot glue, I expect. That's the way I do most things. Obviously we can bend it to suit in a minute. So we need to trim this down the right length. That's it in place. I haven't glued it yet and I haven't twisted it. I'll just switch that light on. I've extended the wires on the panel far more than I need to just so I can demonstrate. There we go. I haven't found another panel yet. I'll have to have a proper look through my scrap box. So for the time being I'll leave the extra long 
leads on there so I can cut them and add them to another panel when we got it. I've added a rudder on the back. That's just a piece of uh, tin plate or bent metal. I folded it both directions to give us a bit of strength so I can twist it to steer the boat. So now we need a sunny day and a boating lake. Just a quick test in the sink. Oh, that looks like that will work. I might cover over the motor just so we don't get any water splash onto it. Although the boat is very high in the water anyway. So it'll probably be safe. <laughs> 